fresh out the box. Fresh California Plums. Hello and welcome to another episode of Fresh Film Fridays, the podcast where two dudes pick the newest films or miniseries, streaming or in theaters, and discuss them. Today we're talking about Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, which is now streaming on Netflix and was directed by a variety uh, of people. But uh, I'm your co-host, Alec. Oh, I'm Eric. Just kidding. It's Justin. Yeah, that was the first time you ever added a mini-series to the to the title. Right. We've never done this. You know, we've never, like, devoted an episode just to an entire series of a show. So, it's going to be interesting because we're covering, like, ten hours worth of content in 30 minutes. <laughs> also, like, spread out. Like, I didn't binge this. I, I spread it out over, like, a week. So, hoping I remember everything. But, yeah, how did you... You started watching it after me, I think. Yeah, I started watching it, I want to say, last weekend. I watched one episode... And, you know, needless to say, it was it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the first episode is, like, intense and really hooks you, I feel like, because it's so intimate, you know, like, it's just Jeffrey Dahmer and one of his victims, and it's just all on them the whole time, and in the bedroom, and just, like, it's just extremely uncomfortable. And you try to put yourself in that shoes, you're like, how would I escape, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like how they started the series kind of from the end. So, like, we, we kind of talked about it while playing games, but my first two years at college, I was a criminology major, so, like, I had to study, like, all these guys and everything, so I knew that that dude who escaped was the last guy. Mm -hmm. But I like how they did it instead of kind of, like, leading up, like, showing him as a child. They kind of, like, did a mesh of it, which was cool. Yeah, they, like, Quentin tarantino did. it. They're like, all right, let's show him getting caught, and then, like, we'll work our way back into that. Yeah. And then it also went past that, too, which was cool, too. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's made just kind of like a re, like a little intro to the series. It's uh, it's made by Ryan Murphy. He's the same guy that does American Horror Story and Nip Tuck and O.J. Simpson versus The People, all those stuff. Extremely talented guy, really knows how to pick great casts and writes great scripts and everything like that. So, I don't know, man. This was, I thought this was really great. I thought this was like a fantastic miniseries. I mean, did you enjoy it, like, from beginning to end? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it got an uh, 8.3 on IMDb. Wow. And... Before I touch up on Evan Peters, I think the cast was good. Mm -hmm. Richard Jenkins as a dad, I thought he did a great job. Oh, yeah. Molly Ringwald, kind of random, but she didn't have a huge part in it. Yeah. Niecy Nash. Who oh, yeah. Glenda Cleveland did a great job. Ah, uh, dude. dude. Yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with Evan Peters. Yeah. He's like Quicksilver and X-Men, and he was in some fighting movies called Never Back Down. But I think this is by far his best work. Well, he's been in every single episode or a season of American Horror Story. I've never seen American Horror Story. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's where you got to start, dude. Yeah, so he's been in every season of that, such diverse characters in every season. He doesn't play the same character. Every season's different, so he's, like, such a variety of characters throughout that. But, dude, this, like, put him, I mean, I feel like this is going to throw him into, like, superstardom. Like, people are going to want him in everything after this. I yeah, mean. he's really creepy. He's really fucking creepy. Yeah, he's, I mean, Jesus, I, he reminds me of like a young Johnny Depp kind of. Young Jeffrey Dahmer? Well, yeah. So sure. I started off watching one episode at a time, and then I needed like a break just <laughs> because I was like, this is, this is a lot. Yeah. And then I worked my way up to two. I did three today because we were recording, and the finale was great. I have some notes, though, because I do have some interesting topics that I think, uh, I don't know if they just didn't really mention in the Netflix documentary, but so the drug that he was using, mm -hmm. I forgot what it's called, but I Googled it while we were watching it, and it's something that hospitals gave people who had insomnia to, like, just knock them out. Okay. Which is why people were just, you know, almost dead, basically. But where was he getting it from? Huh. I'm assuming, uh, you know, in the 80s, maybe you could just, like, buy it on the street. But, like, that's... Who's selling something like that to sleep? Hmm. Yeah, you're right. I don't remember them saying that. What, what was he doing for a job? He was, like, a chocolate mixer or something? Like... He worked at the, you know, the Hershey's place, and then he was a phlebotomist taking blood. I mean, it's possible... He just bought it illegally, but I don't. I don't know. They did. They didn't specify that like at all. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember that either. Kind of jumping to the end with with the court, how the court saw him as not insane and, and sending him to jail, and it got me thinking. Like, I guess from a legal definition, the judge didn't declare him insane because they view insanity as like he had no clue what he was doing. And Jeff said, "I knew what I was doing the whole time. Right. I couldn't help it." But from like a, I guess society 
point of view, don't you kind of have to be insane to do this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if you're like, you know, cognizant of what you're doing and but like you're still doing this, which is an insane act. So I don't know. It's a very weird gray area, I guess. And like the legal system, it's like this guy seems like he's got it all. To, he's not like acting like the Joker and like cackling and, you know, like freaking out in the courtroom and dresses like a clown. Like he seems like he's got it all together. But look what he's doing, you know? There's, like, a method to his madness, so they think that he's, like, sane enough to come up with these things that, like, I don't know. But, no, yeah, the... give the guy the death penalty. I don't know what they were thinking, man. Yeah, well, they, they didn't have it in the state at the time. Yeah. First off, this this doesn't really happen anymore, obviously, with technology, because now if, you, if you're if you at the scene of a crime and, like, literally one hair follicle falls out, they're like, I know, I know his credit score. But, dude, back <laughs> then in, like, the mid-'70s where there's no, like mass blood dna pool and there's no you, they couldn't even star 69 who who was calling them like you could easily kill someone and as long as you don't leave like your license there they mm-hmm. like there's no way they could find you so i think between when this happened and the fact that back then like cops social workers and psychologists didn't really know much about these signs it's just like that's why there's so many killers in the 60s 70s and 80s yeah, I think you're right. I mean, they, they kind of talk about that in, like, the second to last episode, where he's like, why do you think there's more of us now sort of thing? And, and the priest comes up with the idea of, like, pornography and the highway system and stuff like that. But I think it really just comes down to, like, yeah, you're going to get caught, you know? So, unfortunately, and, like, I don't really want to talk about this too much, but I think, like, serial killers have kind of morphed into, like, school shooters, you know? And they don't really want to not get caught. So it's like... Yeah, for the notoriety. Right. Um, But unfortunately, like, this show is very good. It is very compelling. But, like, why are we still talking about this guy? You know? Like, it's not like this is the first documentary or the first even, like, fictional narrative version of this story. Like, there's many versions of this. So it's kind of weird. I like it. I enjoy watching it. But I'm like, this guy was put to sleep or was killed at fucking jail 30 years ago. Like, why are we still talking about this guy? Yeah, there's definitely, like, I looked at the IMDb, and there's, like, a dozen Dahmer-type documentaries and stuff. So, I mean, I'm not sure why they decided to just be like, let's just do another one. Because, (laughs) it's one, it's not necessary, and two, like, people who don't know, maybe younger people who are, like, 16 or 18 who don't know about this, now they know about it. Yeah. Oh, so one of the signs that I was mentioning where I said, like, psychologists and social workers didn't, didn't know as much back then about these signs is, like, the biggest red flag is kids who like to fuck with, with animals. Yeah. So, like, if you're, like, five and you're, like, you know, you want to hurt an animal, like, every single one of these sociopaths who we see or we're reading about, like, they all have the same signs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very common. I mean, well, that's the thing. He didn't hurt animals. He, like, would just mess with their dead body parts already. Like, there was never yeah. a scene of him killing a dog or anything like that or torturing no. a cat. Yeah, but anything weird like that, just, like, looking at their insides and stuff. And yeah. that's why I kind of feel bad for the dad because, I mean, he just, you'd have no clue. Like, he just thought, like, oh, we're just, like, fucking around with this roadkill raccoon. But today, if your eight-year-old is like, let's look at this dead animal, you're like, you gotta see somebody. But I need to know then, like, what makes surgeons want to do what they do? What makes taxidermists want to do what they want to do? I mean, there has to be kids that are like, I'm just interested in body parts, but I'm not going to kill people, you know? like. Eh. Yeah, so, and that's that's one of the things. So, remember at the end, they wanted to look at his brain. Yeah. And it was in, so it was something I studied, but they have lots of documentaries about it. So, like, the front part of your brain... I don't remember what it's called. I think it's, it's just called the prefrontal cortex. Though. Yeah, the frontal cortex. Like all the pictures they did of people who were like killers and shit, there were no like lights, so there was no activity in there. So like their brain wasn't sending signals that like made them second guess what they were doing or be like, hey, maybe you shouldn't like cut this person in half. So there's like this weird thing that they they teach you in like criminal justice courses where it's like, did they really even know what they were doing? And it's very controversial because like. Jeff's like, yeah, I knew what I was doing, and, like, he bought the drugs, and he drugged them, and he led them back to their place, and he put the drugs in the drink and shit. So, like, he knew what he was doing, but his brain, like, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think he's kind of like a, he's a gray area, you know? He, he's like somebody that knows what he's doing, but 
feels kind of bad about it, I guess, at the end. I mean, he he asks for the death penalty. Like, he knows that there's no remorse. You know, he's not going to get any forgiveness. So it's just kind of like, I don't know. Maybe that's what makes this guy interesting. Because you, you would expect somebody to doing this stuff to be like, ha, 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 like, I wanted to do it. I got <laughs> away with it. Like, you know, and, you know. But that's not how he is. So that's what probably makes him interesting, I guess. Yeah, and the crazy yeah. part is when he was getting interviewed by the detectives, I think he said, like, at one point he went nine years after his first kill. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It was 1978 was the first one, and then the second one was 1988, yeah. So, I mean, he's able to control it to some degree, but then mm-hmm. also I'm just thinking, like, when they said that, so he, he killed somebody, and then he's just going al- along with his life. He's, you know, he's going to the grocery store, he's going to work, he's talking to people, and, like, nobody knows that this dude is brutally killing people hmm. and raping their dead bodies. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't think he did that for 10... Like, he didn't do that in 1978 and then went about his life for 10 years. Like, he killed that one guy that he picked up and was like, hey, you can bring me to that concert or whatever. Yeah. Like, and, I, and that didn't seem planned at all. That was no. his first kill. So... It's like he killed that guy. I can't remember what he did with him. I don't know if he like he buried him or something. I think and he threw him in the trash, right? I can't remember. I just remember he they were like working out, and then he like <laughs> smashed him in the head with something. Um, but then you know, there's ten years in between that. So he went to the army. Then he was like an alcoholic and all this stuff. And he moved to Miami, like all that shit. Then he moves back to Wisconsin and starts killing people again. And seems like from 1988 to 1991, like he killed a lot of people, like 20 plus people. So yeah, ah. I also read online that which I didn't know is he uh, wore condoms when having sex with the dead bodies. Hmm. I'm not sure if you know this, but they didn't they didn't mention this in the show. Not sure why. Maybe it's just like too messed up. But the heads that he decapitated and like put that embodiment stuff in, mm-hmm. he would he was having sex with those heads. Oh God. Yeah. So like he would kill them, have sex with them, cut their head off, have sex with the head, and then just like eat them. Fucking hell. <laughs> but, but, all right. So why the condoms then? Uh, I think I read online that it said <laughs> he's like my cum's too gross. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think he just. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure why, actually. I think I might have just skipped over it. I don't know. It was just so fucking weird. The whole thing is just so weird. Uh, Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And one thing I do want to point out is the mannequin scene with the grandma. Oh, yeah. Like, that's not how we read it. It was in the closet. He hid it in the closet. Mm -hmm. And when she found it, there was uh, semen all over it. See, I, yeah, that was, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of discrepancies between what really happened in this, but that scene, I was kind of like, I don't think he would keep it in his bed. That seems too, <laughs> like, because he's like, Grandma, don't go in there, and then just leaves, and then, like, you know, there's no lock on the door or anything. It's like, dude, you gotta hide your shit, man. What are you doing? <laughs> You're stealing mannequins and jerking <laughs> off on them. Like, <laughs> probably don't want to keep this out in the open. <laughs> dude, seriously. Yeah. I mean, dude, but he's, he's definitely fucking crazy, so... I mean, if you had to guess, because the reason that they see, they say that he's crazy is basically, like, his his mom was on all these pills when he was a fetus, or his dad took him to play with all these, you know, dead animals, or the dad had this in him already, and society did it, whatever. What do you think, if you had to pin one thing on? Yeah, so I wrote that down in my notes. I think it's a lot of different reasons. So the the movie doesn't, or the show doesn't really explain, like, how many pills or what the specific pills were that she was taking. I mean, right. we know now, like... Pregnant women aren't even supposed to have, like, a glass of wine. Like, don't eat Oreos. <laughs> yeah, you're, like, you're not even supposed to, like, go down the Oreo aisle, just in yeah. case. So, I mean, from what the dad said, she was taking a lot of different things that were being mixed together. And then, obviously, if you take more than you're supposed to, there could be negative side effects. So, she could have, she could have like, messed with his brain, potentially. But then, if he had a stable childhood, which a lot of these sociopaths don't, like, you know, the mom just left. Mm -hmm. which I'm sure messed him up. And then even the dad went the whole summer without checking up on him. Right. So you got this, you know, 17, 18 year old kid who clearly isn't okay, like pretty much abandoned in his house. So I think it was a mixture of the medicine, the family falling apart. And then I read something a long time ago and it kind of makes sense. Obviously his sexual preference was not like widely accepted back Mm -hmm. in the mid seventies because I think he only killed gay guys. Yeah, he would pick them up at, like, gay clubs, yeah. So I think I read something a long time ago, or maybe it was a textbook, that said, like, it's possible that the reason he was hurting these people is because he was, like, trying to fight urges or maybe, like, internally mad that he was this way and it wasn't 
you know, quote unquote normal back then. So he wanted to hurt them. Hmm. I, I think all of that tied together wasn't good. It's a perfect storm. It feels yeah. like, I mean, cause the only thing that I push back on and we don't know, I don't think they talk about it is he's got a younger brother, mm-hmm. you know, and the younger brother didn't maybe he didn't, the mom wasn't taking the same pills or, or any pills at all. Maybe him being taken out of the dysfunctional family early enough was, he was unable to get away from it. I don't, I don't they don't really talk about the brother after like the fourth or fifth episode. Yeah. I kind of wish they mentioned him a little bit, but right. maybe he just wasn't relevant at all. Like, I don't, I don't know. But, but he is relevant though, because if he has none of these tendencies, it's like, okay, well that kind of rules out certain things. I mean, if the yeah. mom was on the exact same pills, then okay, that definitely rules that out, you know. But I don't know. So I think the brother is pretty relevant, and he also, he's still alive, dude. He's he's like 55, you know? Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, uh, you know what's even weirder? Uh, the dad's alive still, and the stepmom. Oh, really? Dude, the dad's like 86. Dude, he's probably scrolling Netflix, and he saw this, and he was like, God damn it, dude. I would <laughs> think they would talk to him, like, come on. like I'm assuming they have to... <laughs> cut him a check for something right like i have no idea because i really don't know how it all works but like i would think that they would talk to him just be like hey can we like make sure some of this is accurate because you know <laughs> can we like bring up the worst time in your life like one more time he's just like god <laughs> fucking damn it this is like really really <laughs> i can't get away from this well i don't know if you read this but apparently this was the most watched thing netflix yeah. has ever released I think it got 200 million views this week alone. What? Um, yeah. <laughs> like, what it's, is wrong with people? <laughs> it's it's interesting, dude. And then, I mean, Evan Peterson did, it like, such a fantastic job. And before I forget, speaking of, of why maybe Jeff did it, like, the dad said at the end he had those thoughts, too. Yeah. And it is, it's kind of like, you know, genetically passed down where, like, if you have anger issues or if you're prone to anxiety or blah, blah, blah. The The only difference might be between, like, the dad and the brother is their frontal cortex or whatever works normally. So they're like, even though like you want to smash a dumbbell in that guy's head, you're like, no, cause then I'll go to jail and it's wrong. Mm-hmm. Whereas Jeff was like, I don't see anything wrong with it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, th- th- yeah, it's possible. And you know, you're not exactly the same as your siblings just because you have the same genetic out make or makeup as your parents. I don't know. The highway thing was interesting that the priest said, he's like, you know, the interstate highways, people are going to kill each other more. It's like, is that it? That was an odd comment. I think how they meant to get it across was it's easier to get away and like hide bodies. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That was kind of weird. Yeah, because Jeffrey Dahmer didn't leave. He stayed in the same spot and killed people. And same with John Wayne Gacy and Ed Gein. Like all those guys, they all just stayed in the same spot. So I was like, I don't know if that's true. And also porn. I'm like, oh, porn's way more accessible nowadays and there's less serial killers than ever. So we think. The weird comment about the porn thing is, I mean back then I, or whatever when it first started like it was a lot of like magazines and stuff and like people it, it porn's a lot weirder today than it was back then is what i'm trying to get yeah, oh, yeah. so so that for that priest to be like yeah you know they're doing sinful things i'm like dude wait till <laughs> wait till 2022 oh my god <laughs> yeah it's gonna get real bad yeah uh, another thing is for some reason this is streamed in 60 countries so uh-huh. Like, why? That's a lot of countries. That's a lot more than just, like, Europe and, like, Australia or whatever, like, Western countries. Like, that's a lot of countries watching this shit. Why do people care? Yeah. It's weird. I don't know. Some some family in Zimbabwe is watching this, and they're like, what the fuck? Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Like, you're never going to America. You know what I did find weird, though, is... Of all the people he killed, he seemed to have, like, an actual romantic connection with that deaf guy. Yeah, exactly. So you're like, damn, dude, like, that could have been, like, it. You could have been like, you know what, I'm, th- I'm putting the towel up. I'm just going to be with this guy now. <laughs> I'm putting the, I'm hanging my drill up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the weird thing was, is when the, when his dad came to visit, like, he stopped drinking. His mm-hmm. place was, you, his place was super clean. Right. And he was holding a job down and they were going on dates and shit like he seemed normal Mm -hmm. and i think what made him snap was he was so afraid that he just wouldn't come back he like wanted to keep his body there so that he was like okay like i have you forever now (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, the second he knocked on the doors and he was like i forgot my keys i was like you dumb motherfucker oh my god (laughs) Yeah, and and it's so weird because like there's a, there's not many shows that you can like like and dislike the lead at the same time. You're like, I should hate this guy, but I don't know. I'm like interested in him. You know what I mean? Like 
he's a be- he's a horrible person, but like I'm watching him. I don't know. I'm engaging yeah, with it. It was definitely one of the best documentary slash shows that I, I've probably have ever seen. It was just done so well. I, I read some comments that said they dragged out some episodes. Hmm. But I mean I, I thought it I thought it was good. But dude, how about the two cops that got suspended? They they got paid suspension, but then were reinstated. They needed to go more into that because that was crazy, dude. I think that was just classic like eighties, early nineties in an inner city where the union just said like cops didn't do anything wrong, like whatever. But I mean, clearly that he was a kid, uh-huh. and clearly, I mean, he couldn't even talk. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> he could, can't stand up. Like, you know, they should have literally been like, okay, listen. Maybe what this guy's saying is true, but we need to make sure for a fact that this is not something weird. Yeah. It's that simple. I think there's like policies now where like if you're too like inebriated or something where you can't even say like, yeah, I'm fine. You like have to go to the hospital. And then they would have seen like, wait, this someone like drilled into his brain. <laughs> yeah, exact. Dude, those cops deserve to get fired. Like, And then they got the officer of the year award. <laughs> They got yeah. that. I was like, this is fucking crazy, dude. I mean, that's the thing. Like, bad policing was, like, outrageous back in the day. I but... mean, dude, there's there's bad policing. And they literally brought this kid back to Jeff's apartment. Yeah. And Jeff was like, thanks. And they fucking killed him and dude. ate him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, those cops deserve to literally go to jail, man. Like, that's cr- – they, they com- like, complete negligence and also resulting in death because of that. No, it's terrible, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this this shed light on a lot of things that are messed up in the criminal justice system. I mean, the fact that Jeffrey Dahmer was able to get away with this, where if he wasn't maybe a good-looking white guy, like, he probably wouldn't have gotten away with it for so long, you know? And it does shed light on that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's why he also had his apartment in a poor section of the city where there, where there were those gay bars, because he knew... <laughs> Cops probably didn't care that much about the minorities, and Mm -hmm. they probably didn't care that much about the gay minorities. So that's why a lot of his victims were that. Not, it's and it's terrible in it, but it like it makes sense if you like piece it together like that. Well, you know what? Why don't we talk a little bit about the cast? Like, obviously, we were talking about how much we liked Evan Peters, but like, I seriously think that Richard Jenkins, first of all, didn't even recognize him at first. I was, I recognized his voice, and then I was like, oh my god, that's him. He is like. (laughs) An un- I, every single thing he's in, dude, I love him. I mean, he t- he goes from Step Brothers to Shape <laughs> of Water. Like what? Like yeah, he he's did the a best. Great job. Uh, but then also Niecy Nash. Like she was on Reno Nine One One. Rainisha Williams. Oh, that's who that is, dude. Yeah. She. Lo- I was like, why does she look so? <laughs> dude, she's a like, she's from Reno Nine One One. Yeah, oh, she's my- dude. She's like one of the funniest characters on the show. And for her to come into this role, like a hardcore drama role, dude, like. I thought she did a great job. Yeah, she was good. Yeah, I uh, I really enjoyed every every all the performances. But you think there'll be a sequel? I I, I don't <laughs> know how there could be. Uh, <laughs> no. Do you think anyone made the guard at the end provide an explanation as to what happened? Like he left Dahmer and the other dude and was like, "Oh, we need a third to help out." Which mm. I mean. You didn't really. And then he left, and that third happened to kill both of them. Like, was anyone like, "Hey, what? Why'd you do this?" Yeah, they don't really get into that. There are a few plot holes. Like, there definitely are. Because, yeah, you're watching that scene. It almost felt like the guard was in on it. Like, he's like... Oh, he was uh, 100% in on it. He purposely left. (laughs) Right, no, exactly. So you're like, why is he in on it, though? Like, why does he... First of all, how does he even know this is going to happen? I mean, I'm I'm assuming he communicated with the guy who killed him. Mm -mm. We shouldn't have to assume. We should have... I I know. They should have showed that. Like, if that's... Like, because to me, it just seems like there's like a mob hit and they're like, they're all in on it. But I'm like, wait, but they didn't, they never showed them talking about killing Dahmer. So it's a little weird. Maybe he just saw tension between them in the prison, hmm. but also not only the guard, but like, were there not any repercussions for that library lady who oh. knew she shouldn't have been providing the, that info to the prisoners? And then she right. gave the black guy the newspaper saying Dahmer would kill gay black men. Like you knew that would piss him off. <laughs> but oh, yeah, exactly. Well, that, not only that. Like, is that even a thing? Like, if you're in jail, can you just be like, "Hey, I want to look up what that guy did." They're like, well, here's the keys. Go look it up. Here you go. I don't know. I mean, she just handed him newspapers. You definitely can't read like why people were in there because because right. you know then. Uh, 
I don't know if you know any like cops or people who work in prisons, but somehow criminals in jail always find out like who are the people who like hurt kids and stuff, and those people yeah. like end up getting beat up in showers. But why she gave him those newspapers? I mean, he probably not have killed Dahmer if he didn't know he did that. I I, I 100% agree with you, and it's weird because they're like, and Jeffrey Dahmer's like, hey, can I like read that like Newsweek magazine? They're like, absolutely not. But then they're like, hey, this guy that's also crazy. We don't know what he did. Uh, you have full access to read about what everybody's done, like multiple articles about what he's done. <laughs> so that was a little weird. That woman should definitely get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> and then also at the end, I love to like the last scene of the entire show is, is um, Nisi Nash being like, I'm very persistent. I'm not going to stop until this park gets made. And then all of a sudden it's like the park was never made like, <laughs> right on the screen. Dude, that's kind of fucked up. I, I mean, like. I want to know what happened to those families. Like, can you imagine, like, you live on the other side of the building? You've never even seen Jeffrey Dahmer. You have no idea what's going on in this building. And then all of a sudden you find out you got to move because this murder happened. You're like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, what? What's going to happen at my house? Like, did they pay for relocation fees? Like, all that stuff? I think the building manager said the city was going to assist with that. But, like, you know, can they find another place that has, you know roughly the same rent like you know maybe they yeah. have to go further away from their work exactly i'm sure it wasn't convenient because that building specifically those people were low income so. exactly so they're like hey this sucks for me to get to work now or like now i'm farther from my family or whatever like what like that sucks <laughs> yeah that's like when nisi was cooking dinner and the cops were like hey everybody's gotta get the fuck out <laughs> she's like where am i supposed to go like i don't have any money like this is bullshit like dude yeah there was Jeffrey Dahmer was a fucking asshole, man. I mean, obviously, but, like, not only did he kill and ruin families, but, like, even people that don't even probably know who he is, they still got uprooted from their lives. It's just, like, yeah. But I also want to ask you, because, like, it, it's just curious, like, what kind of fucking people are writing to these serial killers in jail and being like, you're my favorite, like, here's a lock of my hair, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, what are those people like? Yeah, that, I mean, I'm sure you've seen other movies, because you've seen, uh, you've seen Reindeer Games, for example, right? With mm. with Ben Affleck and Charlize Theron. I don't think I have, actually. Okay, well, anyway, I'm sure you've seen a movie where they have, like, these programs where people write to criminals and, like, yeah. you know, whatever. And, like... You try to, like, help them potentially to rehabilitate for the outside. But, yeah, dude, this was weird because girls were like, I'm your biggest fan. Like, this dude used to fuck heads. <laughs> Guys, too, though. Guys are also writing to him like, hey, man, like, can you send me your autograph and stuff? It's like, why? I'm sure a lot of people just thought it was cool to talk to someone so notorious, even if they were good or bad. But I don't think these people, like, understood what really happened. Like, for example, Nisi Nash, who smelled the corpses and then, like, oh. heard them being cut up with bone sauce and shit yeah i mean she under yeah exactly i think now everybody understands the full story at least at least like you know mostly so yeah it's it's fucked up dude it's, it's, it was a great show but it's really messed up and it really just points the finger at like us as a society like why are we so interested in this and it does our interest because it's not normal exactly exactly but yeah. i don't know yeah it's just uh, it's a shame have you seen any other do i mean they've jeffrey dahmer actual documentaries like real documentaries have you ever seen my friend dahmer have you ever seen that one no I, i've seen he had a bunch of like documentaries of uh like interviews on youtube from when he was in jail that i've seen but i don't think there's, like, ten on Netflix, apparently. Well, there's, I mean, there's legitimately, like, the full documentary, but the uh, My Friend Dahmer's about... Remember the scene in this show where uh, there's, like, the football players, and they're all in the hallway, and he's just like, get away from me, and he's, like, doing the voices and stuff? <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Yeah. So, the movie's basically about, like, his friendships with those people. Wow. Oh. So my yeah. friend Dahmer takes place all in the 70s, and it's, like, him in high school. And uh, actually, the, the friend or whatever, his, like, best friend is the guy from uh, Pig. He's the, uh, he's, like, the young guy from Pig. Well, that's, that's weird because this documentary made it seem like he, he didn't really have any friends. Well, they're not his real friends. That's the thing. So this guy, I think he wrote a comic book about it or a book, and it's called My Friend Dahmer. And it was actually written by a guy that went to high school with him. And it's basically saying, like, he just kind of made weird noises and, and would do impressions of people, and people thought he was funny but weird sort of thing. Yeah, I'm sure they just thought he was, like, a weird dude who maybe was, you know, not, not normal, obviously. But I didn't think anyone thought – I mean, for example – the science teacher who was like, no one's asked me to take a pig home in 23 years of teaching. I'm like, that could be a flag. 
it, red yeah. flag. And she's like, why, why do you want to do this, Jeffrey? Not like, yeah, take it in your bag, shove it in there. Like, yeah, come on, whatever. But I think that was also something that would have only happened in the 70s where, like, <laughs> you know, being, like, super masculine was like, you know, the teacher was like, yeah, you take this pig home and cut it open. Where now, <laughs> now a teacher would be like, I need to talk to your mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also, like, his parents are pretty crazy like the dad is not a good dad the mom's crazy mom wasn't even there the mom was nuts but like the dad is also not a great dad but well that's i did want to ask you before we wrap it up about the dad specifically do you think he was a good dad or bad dad and what do you think about him saying like it was my fault and i forgive you what's your impression on that I just don't think he was present, and I think he was, like, kind of self-absorbed, didn't talk to him, didn't really spend actual quality time with his son to want to get to know him and stuff like that. He said he made him uncomfortable. There's times where Jeff tried to be like, I'm gay or I have these feelings and stuff like that. His dad wouldn't talk to him. So, like, I think he sees that as his that, – that th- those are shortcomings of a father. Yeah, that's like a parent not being there, really. They're there, but they're not, like, there. You know, and... But do you think the dad should feel like any part of that is, is a valid reason why he did what he did? No, because you can not control your kids, no matter if you're the best parent or the worst parent. Like, you, your kids are going to turn out a certain way, and murdering people... No, no. This guy, this guy wasn't like you know sexually abused. As far as we know, you know he wasn't sexually abusing them. He wasn't like d- being horrible to them. Yeah. You know, like to make them do these sort of things. So no, no, I don't think he should feel guilt about what his son did. It's terrible that his son did this, but it's not fucking Dexter. His dad didn't teach him how to do this. Yeah, I also thought it was interesting how he like you know went to visit him in prison every week and still wanted to like keep a good relationship. And then you hear of stories today where like family members arguing and they're like we haven't spoken in three years it's like this dude literally ate people i know and his dad still wanted to talk to him it's all he's got it's all i mean you know it doesn't seem like david the other brothers in his life too much i don't know i can't believe he's still alive though i'm sure there's going to be some interview of him out now it's like i shot the documentary None of it's true. I'll tell you the real story of my new book. It's like, ah, oh, fuck, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> but I don't know, man. I think it's a great doc. I mean, it's a great show, though. Um, Evan Peters, amazing. Richard Jenkins, amazing. Nisi Nass, amazing. Just fucking awesome. Molly Ringwald, amazing. She was, she was fine. Yeah. <laughs> what would you give it? I got an 8.3. Yeah, I'm going to go with an 8. I think it's very solid. Okay. I'm going to go 8.5. Fuck you. Fuck I would, you. I would say this is probably one of the best like i said shows that's also kind of a documentary mm. it was so good it wasn't it wasn't like a boring documentary that was slow and they didn't have interviews with people who's like you know that were blacked out with the fake voices like it was just done so well yeah i mean hey this i mean for netflix this is a win this is a win they needed you know and sometimes netflix has the adam project and sometimes it has the Hummers. <laughs> i thought you like the adam project i do i do I just, okay yeah. okay all right. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for listening into our discussion on Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. If you haven't had a chance yet, we released Hocus Pocus 2 on Monday. And then this upcoming Monday, we have Arachnophobia. So get ready. It's a spider movie. It's scary. And uh, we'll see everybody next Friday with something fresh.